I believe there's three things vaccinated and unvaccinated people can agree on. So here goes. Number one, I totally understand when people say, well, you talking about excess deaths and excess deaths in Australia or Ireland or England and you talking died suddenly and that video, if you've seen it, and then pointing out individual examples of individuals who had a sore shoulder, went to bed, never woke up again, gives them anxiety. And it's not helpful to be around things that make you anxious. And that's one of the things, if you're vaccinated, there is a kind of requirement on yourself to believe that everything is perfectly fine. There's a requirement to believe that what you were told to do or obliged to do or pushed into in order to keep your job or your marriage or your mortgage or things that matter to you or to go on holiday or to go to a wedding or not to be excluded from a funeral or to get into a nursing home. The thing that you did, there's a kind of requirement to keep believing in it because the opposite is too awful. And I think there's a kind of, there's a kind of circle of that, of, of either completely rejecting someone like me uh, calling us conspiracy theorists, calling anybody that's questioning what's going on or the excess deaths or all of the died suddenly. You can reject that completely and say, conspiracy theorists, nutters, uh, I don't want anything to do with it. Or you can kind of say, well, I acknowledge something strange is going on, but I still, it's too uncomfortable. I still reject it. I reject the notion I have to because that's kind of self-preservation, isn't it? If you've had this thing, there's no part of you that wants to think, there could be something strange going on or to link anything to do with the vaccine with excess death or died suddenly. And of course, nowhere in any news media or nursing profession or doctors or medical profession is this being widely acknowledged. So you can reject it alongside the medical professionals and the news media and journalists and charities and everyone else who's keeping silent about this. It's, it's an easy route to reject it. Or you can acknowledge the statistics, the stuff coming out from the ONS, the excess deaths, and then you can say, well, something seems like it's going on and acknowledge that that doesn't feel very comfortable, but that you're still in control of your future decisions. You're in control of how well you look after yourself now. You're in control of if something doesn't seem right, you're going to get help. So you can either reject it completely and reject people like me as conspiracy theorists, or you can kind of do the loop that says, I acknowledge something doesn't seem quite right. It gives me anxiety thinking about it, but... Here's some things I do know. I do know I'm in charge of myself. I do know I'm in charge of myself going forwards. I can still question this. And there's a whole bunch of people out there who are, you know, wanting to support. So I think that's something we can agree on is that there's lots of different positions you might take if you've had the vaccine and all of those are understandable. The second thing I think we can possibly agree on is that this died suddenly or died unexpectedly or died after a short illness so short the person didn't even know about it or 42 year old drops dead in the middle of tennis tournament or NFL player has heart attack or lady goes to bed with with sore shoulder doesn't wake up or, or, or there's so many examples you've all got in your lives and around you whether you reject, acknowledge or choose to accept whatever we can agree perhaps that died suddenly isn't a cause of death. It isn't an explanation. We can agree that there isn't an explanation being given. So in the past, it would be Katie Hopkins died of uh, falling on her head. And we'd say, oh, right, she died falling on her head. We can agree, can't we, that died suddenly or died unexpectedly is not a cause of death. It's a couple of words that then get kind of brushed away. and But no one's explaining, no one's going back, no one's discussing what that cause of death was and how it might be linked to others in a specific age group, specifically males, 45 through 60. And those numbers are quite extraordinary. So I think we can agree died suddenly isn't a cause of death. And I think we can agree there isn't really an explanation for what's going on. So even if you want to dismiss someone like myself, 
you can say, well, there isn't an, there's a void. There's a, there's almost like a vacuum where no one is talking about the situation. So possibly we can agree that. And then finally, I think we can definitely agree what we, none of us would want to see again is the unkindness. And maybe you were someone that got vaccinated but didn't have views on what other people chose to do with their lives. But you may remember the unkindness that the unvaccinated faced. And by unkindness, I don't just mean sort of peripheral, you know, unkind faces, actually being rejected from stuff, actually being turned away from funerals, being turned away from hospitals. Uh, Piers Morgan and others saying that unvaccinated shouldn't be allowed to travel, shouldn't be allowed out. Uh, Andrew Neil and others saying that we should be kept in different places, we should be segregated, that we don't deserve stuff. People saying that we should be forcibly injected. People saying that we should be imprisoned in some cases if we refuse to have the vaccine. We shouldn't be allowed to travel or fly or enter a restaurant or go into a bar. And the village chat groups that were like, well, so-and-so hasn't been vaccinated. Why should she be allowed to attend? Uninvited from synagogues, churches. Perhaps we can agree that no matter where you're at, vaccinated or unvaccinated, you would never want to see that kind of unkindness again. And therefore, if there is something very strange going on with died suddenly, excess deaths, particularly in the male category 45 to 60 and heart conditions, perhaps we can agree we wouldn't want to see unkindness. Perhaps what we would want to see is everybody trying to come together to get answers to try to fix any problems if you can be fixed or try and take best care of everybody, whether they are unvaccinated or not. And just to throw in a fourth thing, which I think is a step too far for most, because in truth, people say about what happened in the past and what happened after the war, or if you mention anything to do with the mass killing of peoples, let's take Rwanda as an example to avoid the obvious. People say, well, I can't understand how that happened. Never again. How on earth did humans turn on each other? But the COVID scandemic and the way people behaved after that gave a very good insight into exactly how humans turned on each other. And perhaps what we need to agree most of all, and this is the fourth point that we need to get to, is that the next time a pandemic is released onto the global population, and perhaps that might not be too far away, is that everybody really rejects the sort of behaviour we just saw. The shunning of neighbours, the humiliating of people who made different decisions, the idea that medical treatment could be refused from an entire people who made different choices. That's a fourth stage we need to get to, but for now we can agree that wherever you're at in the cycle of acceptance, something doesn't seem right. Perhaps we can agree that died suddenly is not an explanation. And perhaps we can agree that no matter what side you're on, vaxxed or unvaxxed, that we wouldn't want to see the sorts of behaviours that the unvaccinated suffered when the vaccine was being pushed. Just some thoughts, but mostly to say that anxiety doesn't help anyone. And just trying to talk about something, to give air to it, to force it into the mainstream, to make it a discussion point, to demand that the British Health Foundation start talking about what's happening, is not a reason for you to take that on as anxiety. That's a reason for us all to work together to agree that we will be an unstoppable force the next time whatever is thrust upon us comes around the corner, as it surely will.